Okay, welcome back to part five of the Wisetech Global Block Learning um, sessions. We're up to, we're going to be halfway through very, very soon. So this here is where we're um, going to finish this and then we're going to do a bit of a review. So let's get straight into it and have a look. So, so far we've looked at um, if statements and we've made decisions about strings. So give me a string, so food, input, enter food. So I'm going to say mango. If food is equal to mango, print if mango is my favourite, I'll print you food. So we've done this, but what happens if I go mango? You mango, but look, that's just ridiculous. Like, so we're going to learn how to fix things like that. So how to do things that actually make a little bit of sense. So um, we're going to look with first thing we're going to look at is strings within strings, so substrings. So instead of seeing if it's exactly equal to, we're going to see if it's got a substring. So we can actually um, see if a string, a character, um, sequence of characters, actually contains a set of characters. So another sequence of characters, another string. So we can go message. Concatenation is fun. Concatenation is just adding strings together. And then we're going to print is the sequence cat in messages. So messages is called my cat, so yes it is. And we're going to print is dog in messages. No. So we would expect it to go true and false. Let's see. True and false. So we can change that to is. We can change to anything we like. True and true. So and same thing we can do um, as before, but we can say not in. So not equal to, not in. So it's just the reverse. And sometimes that makes sense, sometimes it can be a little confusing. So just watch your logic there. So making decisions with strings. So here we're going to go, input your name. If your name has an X in it, we're going to say your name contains an X. But what happens if your name starts with an X, like it's Xander or Xavier? So let's run that. And it's going to say, it's going to be -R. no X in name. What if it's Xander? X A N D E R. No X in name because capital. That's just ridiculous. But lucky for us, after we've finished our little um, exercise, we're going to learn how to fix that up. So our first exercise for today is we're going to just check our input email to see if it contains the word attach. And if it does, we're going to say, did you mean to or did you remember the attachment? And if it doesn't, you're just going to send the email. So this is very similar to something that would happen in Outlook or Gmail or Apple Mail and things, and some of their features. So what do we need? We need to, um, we need an email variable, which will be a string, and we need to look for attach. So I like to put in things that we know. So I'm looking for attach, and I'm going to get our email message. I'll go this. And that's an input, and it's a string with this email as the prompt. So close that up. So now we go if looking for in email message. What are we going to do? We're going to print this. We're going to print, did you remember the attachment? Okay. Um, finish, the, finish the brackets. Else, we're just going to go print sent. We're going to also and close it up. That should work. And I'm going to use these as my test prompts. So this should say, oh, what, what did I do? Um, name looking for because I made a typo looking for. So let's run that again. Um, so it's going to use this one. So typos are very easy to do. Did you remember the attachment? Yes, I did. How are we going? Sent. And last one, I have attached the photo. I have attached my resume to my job email. Did you remember the attachment? So awesome. Let's submit that. Yay, I passed. So now we're going to learn about changing text to lowercase. Now I would use this um, to well, if you're doing comparisons. So it's really easy. So you take message. I know my ABC. And then we use a method which is just a function that strings have, so methods. Um, I'll explain about the dot. Um, so message is a string, and the dot means use the function, the method, lower, that all strings have. So it's going to do this, and all it's going to do is print out, oh, I should know my ABCs. So, and let's have a look at that. Let's put that in there, and we'll run that. I know, boom, I know my ABCs. So, um, yeah, the original string doesn't change. So if we print out that, all it does is it creates a temporary one. So if we wanted to um, keep the lowercase one, we would actually assign it to a new variable. Um, so now we can use both. So why do we do this? Well, well actually we'll change it to uppercase. Um, upper is exactly the same. Um, and as you can see here, low, I know my ABC, lowercase, uppercase, and the original. So message, message, up. and notice that it doesn't change, the message doesn't change unless we store it in a variable. So um, here, new message is there, the message is still the same. Okay, so now we can we can create a temporary copy of the string that contains lowercase and uppercase. We can actually check if it's all upper or all lower. So we can go use is lower, is upper. And um, just to show you, if it's mixed, it's neither. Ooh, so that's interesting. So just like before, we're going to use the if statement to make decisions, and here we're going to check if the name you entered is correct. Enter your name. We're going, is it upper, lower, or it's mixed case? Now, we can use the title method, and that will capitalize the first um, letter of it. So now, we can actually use these to make decisions. 
think this is getting interesting. Caps lock. Okay. So what do we know about screen I'm gonna just do a couple. So we've got we've got um so a message on the lower. We've got, oh, we've got, that is lower. That is upper. And so there's some string functions. So um some of them useful, some are not. Um, some you might use quite a bit. So we're going to check if somebody's accidentally got caps lock put on. And if we need a message and we need to go if is upper, put something else, and then we need to exit. Now I think that we should use like title instead of just lower. I don't know, let's have a look. Um, so we need a variable, message equals input. And we need to go if is upper. What are we going to do? We're going to print that out. Um, and then we're going to print message. And I'm going to go dot title because I think that's a bit better. But it'll probably be wrong. But we'll see. And then else we're going to print. We're just going to print the message. Okay. So I'm going to print. So that should there we go. Message is yeah. ah, it capitalizes after all punctuation. So we may not want that. So lower. So that's a bit awkward, but we could fix that up. So let's have a look. And I believe it was Tolstoy. So we're just using these as our test cases. So, so let's mark that. What? What have I done? Uh, message. Careful, you have. Caps lock on. Oh, I left out fixed. Okay. I left out the fixed. So plus. Um, so if I run that, fixed. <laughs> and let's submit that. So little typo. And we fixed it. Okay. So we're going to keep going. So find the length of the string. So we use a function called len, short for length, and it'll tell us how long the string is. So 12, if I have an extra character in, it'll be 13. It counts the space. Um, and the exclamation mark. So it's just how many characters. So how many characters in the alphabet, you guessed it, 26. If you didn't know that, then you do now. Um, so um, we can count number of words in a um, number of words in a string of letters. So count the number of L's. How many would you expect? One, two, three, three. Three. Okay, so if you want double L's, so there you go, it's only one. Um, string with manipulator comes first, the method name comes second. So replacing parts of a string, we just use replace. So we're going to replace all L's with X, capital X. So how X O works. Duh. Yeah. So goodbye lot. So this is if you're really sad, like yeah, then you're going to give up. Uh, and you can do replace multiple times in the sequence. Uh, so oh, yeah, just does not fix it. So be careful doing that because it does every single one in the sequence. Later on, we'll actually learn how to split a string up into the words, and then you can do individual words if you want to. But for now, we're working on the entire string. Um, Okay, so this one here is for all you despicable me fans, it's Minionese. So we're going to essentially write a program that converts English into Minionese. So for those who've seen despicable me, you know how annoying Minionese can be. So it's five simple replacements, um, and we've got some examples. So we've got a table, we'll do five replacements, and we'll do it. So what do we need? Um, we'll need our sentence, so sentence, and then we need to do our replacements, and then we need to print out our final message. So we're going to, do, um, we're going to use um, message or string dot replace and for example we replace ones with twos so that's what we're going to do so let's grab our input message so message equals input uh, sentence okay so that gives us our English now because python strings don't change when like if we go um, our first one h e comma d e we do that and then do And then down here we're going to go uh, print that will not work because it doesn't actually change the string. So how do we fix that up? We just we can actually assign message place back into message. So we're taking that and we're putting it back into message. So that's one way to do it. So we don't have to create a new um, variable that um, so we don't have to create five variables and now put the new one all the time. So we replace t with d and we're going to replace p with b. And we're going to replace M with B. And just 
Um, so we're assigned that. That should work. I'm going to use these as our test cases. Nice to meet you. Nice to be done. Exclamation mark. Yeah, nicely. So what if we do this? That should become Steve eats potatoes. And I'm going to take. I don't convert some minis further. So we can't convert minis into further minis because we're already using it. So let's submit that and it passes. So yeah, that's all good. Okay, so let's um so let's get individual characters or a string. So why would we do this? Um sometimes you just need to know um the position of a character. So is is the first character a number, is the first character a letter, that sort of thing. So we use that using subscripting. Um and another popular term is called indexing. So we use the square brackets and the index where it starts. So computers always start indexing at the zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You might think, oh, ten things, but no, zero is the first one. So it's actually eleven characters. Um, so message zero is H, one is that, and well, we can just add in here message maybe four. So what do you think it's going to do? We're going to message. Five. Oh, it's a space. Okay, so um, yeah. so you can also go from the end. So minus one is there. Minus five is that one. So you can you can go backwards as well. Um, very powerful. If you go outside, so if we go eleven, we only know it goes up to ten because zero is the first one. You get an index out of range. So um, just be aware of index out of range means that you're either going to pass the end of the string, and that's a bad thing. Um, if it didn't throw an error. Um, and it just left you do that, you'd actually be reading into memory and that's where um, a lot of bugs started happening in computers when um, strings particularly, you could read and write past the end of a string. Yeah. Uh, so out of range, so this one. So what do we do? So lots of words in English and language end with a double letter, like yell, base, for, happiness, free, and so on. You can write a program checks the last letter and the second last letter of word are the same. Here's an example. So it either ends with a, a double last letter or it doesn't. So let's see how we, we do that. So what do we need? We need our input word. We need our input word. And um, easy way to do it is uh, it's two last letters. So word minus one and word minus two. If they're the same, then it's a double. So let's have a look at that. So word equals its input. It's a string and it's just a word. And if we said before word, and we're going to go minus one, so the last character is equal to word the second last character. So if it, that's equal, uh, uh, so print, and we are going to print that. And else, we're going to print that one. So print. Okay, so let's run the code. So it is yell, there's a double letter, run. Um, some um, no double letter again and yellow no double letter again. So there you go. So let's have a look at that. So that's exactly the same as I did before. So and I passed before because it's green there. So we have now done all the halfway point. So we're going to keep doing what we're doing. It's actually going to start ramping up on this. So we're going to do a the next one's going to be a little revision. So we just check off what we've done and I'm going to do a bit of work in the coding bit over there and just um, talk through uh, some stuff that I think is important. So thank you very much for watching so far and I will see you later.